Hello, everyone. I can see I'm it. I'm Yan Zhang from University of Pittsburgh. Today, I will present our paper, Robust Self-Civilized Structural Growth Neural Network for Social Network Prediction. I'm fortunate to work with Dr. Hong Changgao, Dr. Jian Pei, and Dr. Hong Huang during this project. Before introducing our paper, I would like first to provide some visions on self-supervised graph neural network and what motivated our work. First, let's take a review on graph neural networks. The graph signal processing is a fast-growing field where classical signal processing tools developed in the Euclidean domain have been generalized to irregular domains such as graphs. Since the famous paper, semi-supervised -semi classification with graph convolution networks, many variants have been developed to solve different application problems. For example, drug prediction, brain connector analysis, recommendation systems, and various social network scenarios. Basically, every field of graph-related algorithms are witnessing the invasion of graph neural networks. The scalability of graph neural networks to a large-scale dataset is also made feasible by some recent works, either from the optimization perspective, for example, distributed training, or from model perspective, for example, graph sage. On the other hand, self-supervised learning as an alternative to strong supervision are trying to make a better use of unlabeled data. We all know that in strong supervision, for example, in computer vision field, features from networks trained on image net can be used for other vision tasks. However, producing new dataset for each new task can be expensive and laborious. For example, Facebook have billions of images uploaded per day, and it is impossible to label them manually. Or for the medical data, they simply lack enough experts to annotate them. Self-supervision tries to define a proxy loss, and the network is forced to learn what we really care about. In the previous examples, we can easily find that self-supervision are extremely suitable for social network analysis. The graph neural network can be applied to large-scale networks, as we mentioned earlier, and the size issue is typical for social networks. And more importantly, these networks are naturally sparsely labeled. Therefore, there is some existing, existing work trying to bridge the gap between self-supervision and the graph neural networks. For example, graph contrastive coding and the graph contrastive learning with augmentation, which extensively use rewiring. The motivation of our work is natural. Since we have applied the self supervisors to graph networks, why not directly consider subgraph level similarity? We can imagine the benefit of this paradigm for several reasons. First, the node of representation learned in most existing self supervised methods is focused on the node-wise proximity, and the proximity of local structure is less considered. Secondly, the local consistency of the users are seldomly considered, which is related to distributional shift. How work addresses this subgraph level self-supervision? More specifically, we learn the embeddings at a local structure level and use its resistant distance to measure their similarity. Based on this problem formulation, we design a distributional robust contrastive learning framework, which is end-to-end -end trainable via differentiable optimization. This figure illustrates the intuition of our subgraph level similarity. Left is the graph, and we are interested in the similarity of the red node and the blue node. Previous methods usually focus on the representation of the node of interest namely the red and the blue nodes themselves. Our method considers a more general condition. How similar is the local structure of the red and the blue? We know that subgraph sampling is a frequently used technique to accelerate the training and sometimes also enhance the robustness. Here, our ego subgraphs are the subgraphs whose shortest path length between node of interest and other node is R. In self-supervision, our problem is to evaluate how similar is the possible subgraphs surrounding red and blue. Here we depict three samples denoted by shaded area. 
After the graph encoder, we want to insert a robust constraint, which is referred to as distributional robust, since the subgraph is subject to some sampling distribution. This constraint requires that the subgraphs sampled from the node of interest will not be deviant to each other, which is illustrated in the right. Here we assume the embeddings are distributed on a sphere, and the green and the red lines are the embeddings for two subgraphs from the same node, and the yellow line is from a different node. Now the problem is how to define the subgraph level embedding. Since our method is based on sampled subgraphs, we can gather node embeddings in these subgraphs to obtain a set of embeddings, referred to this embedding set as structural embedding. Depending on the sampling technique and the local structure, the structural embeddings are subject to the distribution of neighboring nodes. We can use Wasserstein distance to evaluate this difference or similarity. This figure describes this process. We compute the per node embeddings to construct the subgraph embeddings and compute the Wasserstein distance between two subgraphs as their similarity. This process can be inserted into uh, the self-supervised framework. Before talking about some implementation details, the final part of our problem formulation is how to evaluate the distributional robustness regarding the subgraph distribution. As we mentioned earlier, we require the subgraphs started from the same node of interest to be similar to each other, which means that we can determine an upper bound of the maximum, maximum dissimilarity between these subgraphs this will lead to a minimax problem that for given case and the candidate are equal subgraphs, we only consider the most difficult query, defined as the one that has the worst similarity with the matched key. Unfortunately, this is a difficult problem because we can hardly get the closest solution form. To overcome this challenge, we propose a symptotic relaxation whose final form is in this equation. Here, tau is the temperature parameter. W hat is some adaptive threshold indicating the maximum Wasserstein distance. We refer this relaxation as to asymptotic distributional robustness, and the details are left to the paper. For the implementation, uh, we're using a deeply implicit layer. Solving the one Wasserstein distance problem can be formulated as a linear program problem. We can rubber this computation into a deeper implicit layer to make the model fully end to end trainable. Here, deeper implicit layer is a customizable layer to help solve quadratic optimization problems. We also leave the detail to the paper. Now I will present the experimental results. In the experiments, we basically follow the experimental settings in the graph contrastive coding paper. Specifically, Table 1 lists the pre-training dataset, which is parallel to some baselines for a fair comparison. We use GIN as the backbone model, and the detailed parameters can be found in the paper. In the next several slides, I will first show some quantitative comparison between our method and the related baselines, uh, which include three downstream tasks and the baselines will be given later. Uh, then I will discuss some parameter choices and uh, some future direction. Since the pre-training dataset from NetDriver and the SNAP focusing on academic and uh, social networks, the downstream tasks are also focusing on homophily scenarios. Our method will be denoted by proposed. We also include an updated version of our method to demonstrate the effectiveness of some of our design. Uh, this version denoted by proposed triangle omits a distributional robust consideration. The first task we consider is to predict the unknown node labels in a partially labeled network, and the results are summarized in Table 2. The top block provides the dataset statistics. The middle and the bottom list the comparison. In this task, the supervised baseline include ProNanE, GraphWave, and uh, Structure, StructureVec. We include several variants of GCC, 
and the major comparison is between the proposed method and the GCC ETOE and the GCC MOCO. For this task, we find the pre-trained graph neural networks are superior to the supervised models, which is reasonable since the pre-trained dataset has a far larger size than the task dataset. Uh, for example, our model outperforms the best supervised baseline, struck to VEC by up to 2.7%. Compared to self-supervised baselines, our algorithm shows improvement with better stability for different datasets. The ablated version is comparable to the best performing baselines, and the four models are superior. Next, we consider graph classification, which is also a classical task. We conduct our experiments on several social network datasets, and the results are summarized in Table 3. Again, the top block presents the data, dataset statistics. Besides the similar GCC variants, we use deep graph kernel, graph DVEC, and navel graph as non-deep baselines. And we use DGCNN and the graph as a morphism network as the deep baselines. We know that GRN is designed particularly for graph classification, so it is not surprising that generally it achieves the best in baselines. Our method significantly outperforms GRN in some cases. In other cases, our method is also competitive to the best performing baselines, regardless of supervised or self supervised. For example, on Collab, IMDB binary, and IMDB multi. The last downstream task is top k similarity search, which attempt to find the most similar vertices in one graph for the vertices in the other graphs, given two graphs. Table 4 summarizes the result of the top 10 accuracy. The datasets are called the graphs, including KDD versus ICDN, which is KI, SRGR versus CRKN, which is SC, and SIGMOD versus ICD, which is SI and the ground truth similarity is the common authors in both conferences. Uh, this is an arm supervised task, so we use the pre-trained model without fine-tuning. The baseline methods, including random guess, RX, Pencil Plus Plus, and the graph wave. And compared to the in-place method, such as Pencil Plus Plus, the self-supervised methods show competitive performance. Uh, due to the difficulty of this task, I think some baselines uh, including our methods, are not statistically different regarding several datasets. To evaluate the robustness of our method, we alter the sampling settings and the cardinal of the structure embeddings and observe the model performance. Here we show some results. Left is the model performance on the five different sampling technical settings. For neighborhood sampling, we consider different label size, including 4 and 5, denoted by an S4 and 5. For random work, we consider different restart probability denoted by RWR, including 0 0.6, 0 0.7, and 0 0.8. The results are based on tenfold validation accuracy on related binary. Our model performs similar on the different settings. Right is model performance versus uh, sampling size. Our structural embedding uses neighborhood sampling, and in the above experiments, we consider five neighbors with, within one hub for each node of interest. The results show that with the growth of the neighbor size, the model performance first increases, then stays stable. The size used in this paper is chosen to balance the computational efficiency and the performance, which we will discuss in the next slide. The previous results show that our model outperforms related baselines in several representative graph directed tasks. The potential disadvantage is that uh, our approach requires longer computational time compared to the related pre-training graph method. Here is table 5 in our paper, which describes the uh, pre-training time for the major baseline GCC MOCO and our approach using different subgraph sizes, which is denoted by superscripts. Our methods achieve some performance improvement uh, obviously at a moderate cost of the computational time efficiency. The main bottleneck is the resistance distance optimization. And we notice that the post-step time is also positively correlated with the size of subgraphs. 
in my opinion, improving the computational efficiency would be a promising future work. Uh, now we conclude our work. We design a robust self-supervised graph neural network to learn structural embeddings. And our method is end-to-end -end trainable and let's use different application scenarios. This is the end of our presentation. Thanks for your attention.